The playground is where the place where all the kids gather for recess. But have you noticed the patterns of the characters? All of them are the same age throughout the entire series. I will explain this to you. Third Street School was built in the late 1930s. TJ was amongst the first students to attend. He was always proven to be a strong leader, running for fourth grade president in 1938. Just as the world was plunging into World War II, however, the principal at the time was making budget cuts on certain lunch items, attempting to lead rev a revolt. TJ was hit by a police car during a student walkout in 1939. TJ's spirit still lives up on the playground, teaching kids how to stand up for their rights. Mikey soon transferred to the school after TJ's death, starting the first grade in 1939-1940 school year. Mikey was always hungry, demanding for food. However, he was the kind of gentle person, causing him no harm to the students around him. In 1941, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Feeling depressed, he was at the insane amount of chocolate bars to cope with his disease. He went into a diabetic coma in 1942 and died later that year of a heart attack at the age of 9. Mikey still walks the playground fat as ever and hungry as ever. Spinelli began attending school in 1943, a school year after Mikey's death. Always trying to act like the tough one, Spinelli would controverse with the ghosts of TJ and Mikey to share with them with their, her experiences. Spinelli died in a fight in 1946, during her second repeat of fourth grade. She now hangs with the rest of the gang, acting as the group's bodyguard. Randall started at Third Street School in 1954, the dreams of becoming a reporter. He often worked as the snoop for the school, and King Bob despised by the gang especially Spinelli. Randall one day caught a random bystander assaulting a second grader in 1956 and told the principal. This was a different principal from the one in the 1940s. Furious, the bystander shot Randall after invading his house. A few nights later, he was struck in the head and killed instantly. Randall is still known as the Third Street's best snitch. Gus began school in 1961. He was often quiet and kept to himself. He conversed with TJ, Spinelli, and Mikey a lot, as the ghosts were his only friends. He had often been a target of the playground bullies. One fateful night in 1963, Gus was walking home from school in tears, covered in dirt and blood. He had been beaten by the neighbor's bullies, and the previous day, his parents had forgotten to pick him up. Gus collapsed at the sidewalk in front of his house, and was turning to walk towards the door. He died on New Year's Day in 1964. Gus was viewed as a nerdy kip of the group, and often keeping to himself and avoiding dirt and filth. When Tyler's began school in 1968, the Ashleys were already in school, living the dream as the top-notch fourth graders. Both groups were often despised by the rest of the kids on the playground. One night while the girls were having a sleepover, and the boys were having a game night, both coexisting that night, a serial killer broke into the armbruster mansion and murdered the armbrusters. Quinlan and children, Tomessa children, and the Bulekid children. The killer was eventually captured by the police in early 1969. The Ashleys and the Tylers still roam the playground, acting like the big people on campus. Gurchin came to Third Grey, Third Street in 1972. She was shown the intelligence of the group, winning the science award every year until Becky Benson stole her new project in 1979. Gurchin went home that day on a mad rampage. In her anger, she had committed herself so taking her own life with a shot to the head. She is still there more intelligent of the ghosts of the group, and is even willing to tutor her friends when she has the time calls for it. Diggers Sam and Dave attended Third Street in school well after Gurchin's death beginning of 1978. Both boys had always had been interested in digging. In the summer of 1981, they became caved within exploring an old coal mine. They had never got out and died approximately two weeks before being trapped. They dug near the school playground, afraid of digging outside the school grounds would cause them to lose their lives in the afterlife. 
Vince, who was the last one to join the gang, attended the school in 1988. Just like the crazy 80s were coming to a close, Vince worked hard on his basketball career, often dreaming of making the NBA. Inspired by the famous NBA stars of all time, one day in 1992, he tripped and broke his leg. After going to the doctor, he was told that he wouldn't be able to play basketball anymore. Devastated by this, Vince had attempted to take his own life in 1993. As a result, he was sent to an insane asylum where he died in 1996. Vince plays a wide variety of sports in the afterlife as the protagonist gang of the ghosts was finally completed upon Vince's death. King Bob was known as the king of the playground after winning class president of the fourth grade in, night in 2001. King Bob was always a fair ruler. After going crazy with power with the fourth grade body led up to a cope de tate, King Bob was not allowed to run for president during 2002-2003 school year. As a result, he murdered the entire student body in one night by breaking into their house and stabbing them to death. He was sent to a juvenile detention facility in the fall of 2002 and stayed there until he was killed by another prisoner in 2009 in the 5th Street Correctional Facility at the age of 19. Due to the tragedies caused by the 1st Street School playground, the school was shut down and deserted in the summer of 2010. With the last 5th graders leaving in 2005, the 9th on the 70th anniversary of the death of TJ. However, this did not affect the school playground nor its current residents. The ghosts of fallen children still frolic and play on the playground of what was first grade school as if it never shut down. <laughs>